What is going on guys and welcome to today's video and in today's video I'll show you how to design model and print this 3d printed screw that you can clamp onto your desk for your home or office desk setup that said Let's get started. So when it comes to 3D printing, we know how useful it is to have a 3D printer on hand to make design and prototype items that we can use to create our own products or to create our own ideas. But if you notice for a lot of everyday things that you can buy online, you can typically actually make them yourself and print them yourself, which is why I 3D printed this desk clamp. I wanted to clamp something onto my desk while creating something useful and practical instead of something that I just might throw away at a later date. So with that said, I'm gonna show you how to create this from scratch exactly what you'll need in order to make this project and exactly how to set this up for success if you want to 3d print this for your own projects or even for whatever other projects you have in mind so with that said i'm going to go ahead and jump into fusion 360 and get started with the process okay so before we get started you'll need to install this plugin or this item for fusion 360 as the tutorial i'll be covering today will be using this item that i found that is specifically for 3d printing screws and threads the item here on your screen is called called Fusion 360 Thread Profiles for 3D printed threads. Now down below, you will need to install this before actually getting started with the project. Go ahead and follow along with the instructions on this page. Of course, there'll be a link down below in the description, but you're essentially what you're doing is installing the 3D printed metric XML profile. Essentially what this is for is it makes your life easier in order to make screws specifically for 3D printing as the profiles for threads in Fusion 360, they're not essentially optimized for 3D printing where this profile right here it's specifically for 3d printing to ensure a successful print every single time so with that said go ahead and install this into your fusion 360 application and let's get started with the modeling process okay everyone so i went ahead and opened up a blank canvas for fusion 360 and i named this canvas as 3d printed desk clamp tutorial so if you guys want to name it just like that i would recommend you do so as it would help you reference this later on in the future if you decide to recreate this for your own personal projects so the very first thing here is I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm going to sketch on this plane right here. Here I'm going to reorient my view and now we're going to select create rectangle three point rectangle. From here I'm going to select my origin plane and just sketch this out. Now the dimensions we're going to set here is for height or excuse me for the width is going to be 2.5 inches. For length is going to be three inches and press enter. Now I forgot to mention here that we are going to be working in inches for the document setting. So please make sure to change that. But if you prefer to work in millimeters, totally fine. But I have this set up for inches. So we're going to create an offset. So I'm going to press O on my keyboard. From right here, I'm going to turn off chain selection. And then I'm just going to select this line right here at the very top. From here, I'm going to create an offset of negative 0.5 or excuse me, 0.5 then press enter. The next thing we're gonna do here is start extruding our project in order to create the actual design or the actual 3D model. So I'm gonna press E on my keyboard, press this sketch here. Now I'm going to extrude by 0.3 inches. Press enter. The next thing we need to do is we need to continue with the extrusion process. So I'm gonna go back to my sketches, toggle back on the sketch, press E on my, on my keyboard again, toggle this new sketch that we have here where we selected that offset and then we're going to extrude this by three inches and press enter. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a new sketch on the new extruded part that we have on, on the side of the actual piece here. So I'm going to select sketch, toggle that plane, reorient the model, and now we can begin the sketching process. So from here, we're going to go ahead and select the offset tool, click this outer line here, make sure your chain selection is turned off. From here, I'm going to type in negative 0.3. And that should give us our new sketch. From here, press E in our keyboard, select this very top new sketch that we created. And from here, I'm going to select this, this uh, face right here. That way it extrudes all the way and it makes it an equal length for top and bottom. After that, press join. Now you should have something that has kind of like an L shape or essentially a U depending on the way you're looking at it. And this is what you should have so far in your Fusion 360 profile. The next thing we need to do is actually create the actual thread itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sketch, 
select the plane that we were currently working on, which is the actual bottom plane, the very first plane we started with. And from here, we're going to select create polygon circumscribed polygon. From here, I'm going to select the very middle, bring this out to about, let's just say 0.7 inches and then press OK. After that, we're going to create a circle, draw right in the middle of that actual polygon there and set this to about 0.75 inches and press OK. After that, we're going to select E on our keyboard, select the actual circle, that new circle that we just sketched. And now we're going to shoot this by five inches. Now you should see this all the way extended to about five inches tall. Don't worry about how tall it is. I'll explain a little bit more later on. After that, just press OK. The next thing we need to do is toggle on our existing sketch. So press the eyeball on sketch three, press E on our keyboard. Now we're going to extrude this little hex part. This is essentially the part that allows us to screw in or to kind of build a handle within the screw itself. And I'm going to bring this to about 0.3 inches. After that, press OK. So the next thing we need to do here is actually create the thread for the actual screw itself. Now there's a certain feature in Fusion 360 which allows us to do that. So the next thing we're going to do here is go to create, select thread, and now we're going to select this face which is the actual cylinder of the part we just extruded about five inches. So select that. And now you should have something that looks like this. Now, keep in mind when you select threads in Fusion 360, it actually does not model it or show the final output of the thread. And of course, for example, if you're dealing with higher or more dense models or such things like that, it can it can definitely take a toll on your computer system. But of course, for this uh, for this project, we are going to have this modeled in. So for example, if you see there's going to be a box here on the right hand side that shows faces, modeled, full length, thread type, size, designation, class, direction, remember size. Now, if you don't know anything about threads, don't worry about it. You don't really need to know every single thing about each and every single type of thread because there are so many and they all have their own use cases. But for this video, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what we're going to be using in order to have a successful project for this video. So the very first thing I would toggle is modeled, which actually give us a 3D model of what the actual thread looks like. The next thing after you've installed the 3D metric threads, so you'll only see this profile here, for example, in the thread type, if you went ahead and actually installed the actual GitHub or the XML file that I recommended in the very beginning of the video. After that, I'm going to select that 3D printed metric thread. And then this gives us a profile for 3D printing. And this is essentially just optimized for a 3D printer because with traditional threads, they're a little bit tighter. They have a lot more tighter tolerances. They're a little bit more difficult to make. And if anything, if you want to 3D print them, there are typically there's changes in tolerances that you'd have to adjust for. And specifically, since most printers are different, your printer is going to be different from mine. It's better just to have a profile that works across all universal 3D printers or at least most of them. So with that said, let's go ahead and select the 3D printed metric threads. From here, size, we're going to select 20 millimeters. The designation doesn't actually even matter. So M20 uh, times 5 is fine. Class 0.8 is fine. Direction right hand is fine. And just press OK. So now the next thing we need to do here is create some sort of stop and gap for this very top piece for the actual screw itself. Now the reason I say that is, for example, is that since we're going to be using this thread here on the left hand side, we are going to want this to screw into this desk clamp on the right hand side. But the problem is you won't just have this top screw just hitting this very top piece here as, of course, this could probably damage it and it's not enough surface area for it to actually clamp onto this piece that we have here or onto this face. So what we need to do here is we need to create another design here that allows us to actually clamp to the actual desk itself. So I'm going to select my sketch. I'm going to actually design on this top part here. Now from here, I'm going to select the center circle diameter. I'm going to look for the very middle of this design here. So I'm going to select right there. There's a little circle that pops up and I'm going to just extend this out to let's just say about 1.5 inches from here. I'm going to create another circle, bring this in and I'd say about 0.75 inches and press OK. Now we have a sketch of what our actual piece looks like. 
The next thing I'm gonna do here, just for the sake of sketching and making sure we keep everything organized, I'm gonna to toggle off the thread itself. The next thing I'm gonna do here is press E on my keyboard, select the inside and outer um, sketch that we just designed, and I'm gonna extrude this by 0.3 inches. From here, press OK. Now at the very underneath of the design here, we need to make sure we have a slot or something so we can actually screw the actual design inside. So I'm gonna select my sketch again, toggle it back on, press E on my keyboard, make sure to select both of these pieces since it was printing off of the thread itself, it's gonna give us this weird profile slash sketch. Don't worry about it as for the sake of this video, we won't be worrying about that at all. So I'm gonna just bring this up to let's just say negative 0.25 or 0.25, excuse me, and make sure you have the cut option toggled on within your extrude feature. So I'm gonna press OK. And now you have something that looks a little bit like this. And this essentially what gives us the ability to create a thread that goes into that actual slot that we just made here. So from here, I'm gonna select S on my keyboard, type in thread, toggle that. And from here, I'm gonna select this little inner piece right here. Then I'm gonna select thread type, 3D printed screws, size 20 millimeters, modeled. Now press OK. Now we have what it looks like the inner workings of our actual cap. That way when we actually screw this into our actual desk clamp, it actually clamps onto the very top piece of our design, which is incredibly important. And as you can see here, this thread actually fits into the actual design itself. So if I were to show you a section analysis of this, you can kind of see that the thread, if we were to thread it in the actual real life, for example, it would actually fit in here. Obviously it doesn't look accurate on the model, but right now, since we're actually sketching and designing right now, it won't show up for us just yet. But assuming if you have both the threads correct, so for example, if you have a 20 millimeter size on the actual thread on the screw, and if you have a 20 millimeter size on the inside, then they should fit just fine, assuming you're using a 3D printed metric thread profile. So we pretty much have the screw process done. It's so simple and so easy that it literally takes us less than 20 minutes to do, probably even much more less time than that. The next thing we need to do is actually create the actual sketch for this part right here. So the very next thing we're gonna do here is I'm going to use my section analysis tool. So I'm gonna to toggle off all the sketches type in S, section analysis, toggle this on, and I'm select this top face right here. From here, I'm gonna just bring this down, that way I have a little bit more control when it comes to modeling this actual piece right here. Select my top view, and from here, we're gonna get started with another sketch. So I'm gonna select create sketch, toggle this face, and from here, I'm just gonna select center diameter circle. And from here, I'm gonna just select what looks like or what appears to be more on the middle, kind of on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna just select that right there, type in 0.75 inches, and then press OK. From here, I'm gonna press E on my keyboard, extrude this down, opposite side, cut, and press OK. The next thing we're gonna do here is press S on our keyboard, thread, select the inside of this face here, select 3D printed metric threads, modeled, make sure the size is to 20 millimeters or it will not work, then press okay. Now you have the inner workings of our actual thread here. So I toggled off the section analysis tool. Now you have a screw, uh, the screw here that allows us to screw this into the inside of the actual desk clamp itself, which is incredibly important. Now, pretty much what you have here is just details for the project. Of course, there's pretty much nothing else left other than adding fillets and chamfers, depending on how you want this to look. This could essentially be completed as is as of right now, of course, but we of course want to make it look actually aesthetic and actually look good at the very end of the day, as that's the whole purpose of this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and select S on my keyboard, fill it, type that in. I'm gonna select these outer edges here, and I'm gonna add a fillet, of, let's just say a point, point 0.4. Cool. Next thing we could also do here to make this a little bit easier on us, we can press S on our keyboard, type in chamfer, add this, select that sketch, select that end, 
chamfer this inward. That way it adds a little bit more strength to the actual piece itself. Of course, it won't add it dramatically, but of course, adding any more depth or thickness to the actual design will help with this clamp, especially if you're gonna be loading heavy objects on this. So let's just say if I were to add, say a 0.45, and there we go. Now, of course, the very last thing here to do is to send this off to print to make sure that not only your tolerances are correct, but to make sure that the print came out well. And that's pretty much it for this Fusion 360 tutorial. Make sure to go ahead and send this off to print, give it a test, and let's see if it works. Okay, so before we send this off to print, I wanna show you guys exactly what it looks like when it comes to importing this into your slicer. So I'm using a Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon to print this print that we just made. And essentially what it looks like here is this is the final output that you should have in your slicer. Of course, your slicer will create different outputs. Now I've enabled support using trees as I think this is the most efficient as I believe there is some slot here that has an overhang that could be a problem if we don't use it. So just for the sake of, I guess, safety or security or making sure that it prints well, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add tree support. But other than that, everything turned out fine. Now, the only thing here as well is, uh, which is reference to the 3D printed threads that I mentioned earlier, you can see when it comes to 3D printing this actual thread, your 3D printer should have no problem printing this. And if anything, it should be no issue. Of course, you can make this a little bit stronger with a higher amount of infill, let's just say maybe 25 or so. But of course, the more infill you have for this, the stronger it will be, but it will take much more time. So just keep that in mind. So with that said, pretty much everything looks good on my end. I'm gonna go ahead and send this off to print and tell you guys what the results look like. Okay, so now the design has been printed on my Bamboo Labs. It's time to give it a quick test. I took everything off the build plate and everything came out just as expected. The screw screws in perfectly. The cap screws in perfectly as well. And if I were to tighten the screw, it reaches all the way to the top of the clamp, giving it a nice little clamp to the actual top part. So if you were to put this on the desk, it screws in just nicely. The only thing here is that if you were to screw it in way too tight, the actual bottom piece does extend a little little bit. So that would be the only caveat here because of course it's not the same as a metal piece where a metal wouldn't actually bend like the ones you see on Amazon. But let's just imagine like if we were to move forward with a design like this, we had some sort of a cup or something to um, hold cups onto the, onto the side like a mug, coffee or whatever that might be. Okay everyone, so I hope you guys had enjoyed this video. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. Let me know if there was something specific that you needed help with or maybe something that was a little bit confusing as I do plan to read these comments and to make any adjustments or changes for future videos. So with that said, this is part one of creating this desk clamp. In, in the next video, I'll show you how to make this exact same desk clamp into an actual cup holder that you can use to hold essentially coffee, mugs, or anything of that nature for your desk and to actually build some sort of utility to this desk clamp itself. So with that said, this is Brandon signing out. If you guys enjoyed today's video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below your thoughts and opinions, and I look forward to see you guys in the next video. Peace.